Alrighty, so now we're going to do pretty much the same work a different way. This time I'm going to use a number line. Now, when using a number line, the first thing I want to do is I want to draw out one of my fractions. And so I'm going to partition my number line. And let's say I'm going to set my number line from 0 to 1, right? I'm going to start off with 1. If I need more, I'm going to add to my number line. Then I'm going to show on my number line where through 3 fourths lies. And so in order to do this between 0 and 1, there should be an additional 3 ticks, right? My first tick, my second tick, my third tick, and then 1 is equivalent to my fourth tick. It's like thinking to myself, well, this is 1 fourth, this is 2 fourths, this is 3 fourths, and 1 whole is equivalent to 4 fourths, right? And so let's start there. I have three fourths here, but I want to add six eighths. How might I do this? Well, I don't have eighths here, and so that's the first thing. I need to make sure that I go back to zero, and I now can divide it, or I can partition it into eighths. And so, again, I'm going to go back. 1 eighths, 2 eighths, 3 eighths, 4 eighths, 5 eighths, 6 eighths, 7 eighths, and 8 eighths. Yep. Yeah? We know 8 eighths is equivalent to 1, just to make sure. Alrighty, so now that I'm at my point of 3 eighths, in order to add 6 eighths, notice that, well, I need a little more space because I'm realizing that my sum is going to be greater than 1, right? Because if we notice, we have, initially I was here, 6 eighths, like we could all could relabel this. If I'm at 6 eighths, for 3 fourths, and I want to add another 6 eighths, well, 1 eighth, 2 eighths, I need space, and so now I'm going to partition and make my number line a little bit bigger. And again, because I'm using eighths, I'm going to partition from 1 to 2 into eighths as well. Yeah, and now, for my initial fraction, 3 fourths, which I also said is the same thing as 6 eighths, I'm going to go forward 6 eighths. So count with me. 1 eighths, 2 eighths, keep going, 3 eighths, 4 eighths, 5 eighths, and 6 eighths, right? And now this is where I stop and I think to myself, well, what is that if I had Altogether, 8 eighths here. I could also say this is 9 eighths, 10 eighths, 11 eighths, and 12 eighths. Okay? Now, we don't want to leave our 12 eighths expressed in this way. We do still want to um, express our answer or our sum as a mixed number. And so, using my 12 eighths, I can then again use a number bond to better express how many holes there are, and if I have any fractional um, parts to it. And so, again, 12 eighths becomes 8 eighths, and this is just a representation of the work we already did, and then 4 eighths, okay? We know 8 eighths is equivalent to, friends, 1. We know 4 eighths is less than 1. So our answer, or our sum, I should say, as a mixed number would be 1, and four eighths, all right? Now, honestly, visual representations allow us to see the work. However, if we're thinking about a strategy that helps you solve this more efficiently, then that's kind of up to you to decide, right? I prefer using non-visual models and tape diagrams, but it really depends up to you, right? Whatever works for you. And that concludes, friends, today's math learning lesson.